Hey folks, my name is Dave and this here is Matthew. He's one of the youngest drivers for NTD Racing and my dude. So anyway, um, you've seen him in previous videos as he's working on different parts of Honcho and his, your biggest video was making this thing. What's this thing right here? A four wheel that we made. We just got off the internet, fixed it up, now it rips. Right, we got that thing. So it was a gas engine. We got it for free off of Facebook Marketplace. And then you did all the work on it. I did some welding. I did a little bit of work on the plasma table. We put an electric motor on it. <laughs> this thing rips. Watch that yeah. video. I'll put a link uh, in the description. My dad below. almost flipped. I did. I crashed <laughs> it. But uh, anyway, let's talk about this. Where'd this thing come from? Trash. We pulled it out of the trash. So our neighbors, <laughs> Ryan, you've seen them on all kinds of videos, especially with Bob, and he's one of our drivers. But they threw this in the trash thinking, ah, you can't do anything with it. It's junk. And so I'm like, nothing's junk. And we are going to take this thing. And they're gone right now. And by the yeah. time they get back, it's going to rip. Yeah. It's totally rip. So we want to drive up in their old scooter that they threw away, their old uh, four-wheeler here. What we're going to do, we got a couple parts here that have shown up. We got, you know, a sprocket and some chain. We got a brake. I think brakes are important, especially with how fast this thing's going to go. But we are going to be putting a 48 volt, 1800 watt brushless motor on <laughs> this thing. It's going to go so fast. We're going to test it with the battery off of the four wheeler first, and then we'll probably get another battery for this thing. But batteries are the expensive part. The motors and all this stuff right here, like the brakes are 12 bucks. Those are cheap, but the batteries are expensive. So we'll test it first on those batteries. But I think first thing we need to do, start taking it apart, come up with a game plan and we'll start building it. While we're building it, we're gonna be using some cool stuff, whether it's electrical stuff, and we'll show you where we get all the parts for that. And that will be linked in the description below. And then also we'll probably be using the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR. And if you like that thing, check out our website, ntdracing.com, and you'll find links for that. And if you want to add that to your own shop, you'll get a hundred dollars off if you use our links for that. But anyway. And if you're looking for getting something like this, build it yourself. Don't go buy one. That could be really expensive. What he said. That's what, all right. Cause this thing's going to cost us like a hundred bucks more than a little more. The motors are expensive, but it's going to be, it's not a play motor. This thing is going to totally, totally rip. It's probably not a good idea, but mom's gone for the week. It's just <laughs> you and me. So we're going to have a good time. Anyway, yeah. let's go ahead and get to this build. And start taking this thing apart. Boom. I like that. Okay, this is one of my favorite things to do is to get to work on a project with my little boy and just to get him interested. Now, our deal was, is if he doesn't work on it, I don't work on it. So as soon as he stops, I man, I got a trophy truck I'm still building named Lefty. But if he's willing to work, I'm willing to put the time in also. And I kind of kept that the most part, except when I was doing a lot of the CAD and some of the, uh, the welding because he just isn't there where he's interested in welding just yet. But he will be soon. And the other part is just really give me an opportunity just to kind of get him to use his tools more and just to kind of see what they will do for him. And he's got a great collection. Since he was a little kid, I bought him a toolbox. And then whenever has a birthday, I will add another tool to it, whether it's a set of wrenches or a set of sockets or whatever it may be. And it's, it actually is starting to be a pretty good set. All right, here we go. We're, we got a lot of work done here. We got this thing totally stripped down to a bare frame. The big picture plan is to make this thing wider, weld everything on there before we paint it and make it look really cool. We're going to take this. We're going to move these points away from each other. Weld some parts on there. We'll show you how we do that. We're also going to make this rear axle wider. We got to put a sprocket on there, a brake disc on there, and those kinds of things. We'll be using the dude's tools. This is a cool toolbox that he has is all his stuff. And it's really, I think the coolest tools. He's got some of these old things from his grandfather and stuff like this, which I think is so cool. I don't even have a tool that big. I have to borrow his sometimes from his great grandfather. I think it's really cool getting tools passed down, but we're gonna be using those to fix this thing up. Hopefully be driving it the next day or two. So now what you can do is loosen this thing up. Let me help you out. Loosen this up first. All right, loosen that up. Just a little bit, that's good. Now slide, not too much, slide the tube all the way forward. Tighten it back up. Oh, let me get you some goggles. Here. Flip the switch on. Nothing down, stand up. All right, turn it off. Grab this thing and pull it out. Right there. The 
flip it on. You want it to go a little bit faster through because if you go too slow, you'll burn the bit. Smooth, even pressure, go all the way, keep going. A little harder, a little harder, that's good, right there. Keep going, keep going. Turn it off. All right, so here is the progress for uh, Operation Bad Idea, I guess we're gonna call it. Um, we extended these a little bit, a little bit of cleanup, and we'll, we'll paint that, it'll look nice. Um, and now what we got is we gotta figure out how we're gonna locate the motor, the battery, the controller, the throttle, the brakes, all those things that you gotta put into an R a uh, go-kart. Um, anyway, we put the seat in here just to make sure everything was gonna fit. I got the DeWalt just so the seat won't fall off. You can see it comes off. But this will be the location that we're gonna put the motor in. You can kind of see, we'll have the sprocket coming off of here. It's gonna go back to the, um, the, the main axle. And then that'll all work. Here's the battery. We gotta make that look a little more pretty. And we just got, got the wires kind of together here. There's a big wire diet coming up here, but that'll happen after everything actually works. Matthew will show you how the throttle works there. Hit that and the pedal and boom. It's gonna have so much power. It's gonna be awesome. So we'll have to make some of that. We're all so gonna make a, a brake pedal. And then what we're doing right now is we're gonna make all the other things. We need to make some bearings for the rear axle. We need to make a mount for the uh, the brake that we're gonna put on here. And then also a mount for the motor, a couple other things. So let's go ahead and get on the Fusion 360 and use the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR to make some really cool parts. All right, before we hop on the computer, let me show you a little trick I use to kind of make some of the parts I'm gonna use. So I got my caliper over here and I've opened it up to exactly five inches. And then I came right on top of it just like this and snapped a picture. Let me go show you how that is gonna be useful for me as we go over and start using Fusion 360. All right, let's get to this. Um, here's my brain dump on Fusion 360. I'm gonna make two parts so I don't bore you with all the stuff I gotta make today. I'm gonna make that engine mount. I'm gonna show you how to do that. That'll be one kind of set of tools I'm gonna to use to do that. And then I'm gonna make one of the uh, the thing that holds the sprocket. So uh, I'll show you how I do that. So first let's do the engine mount. So I took that picture and if, uh, let me show you how I'm gonna use that picture. I'm gonna go over here to insert and then cancel actually, let me see. Insert the drop down and over here to canvas is what I want. So canvas and then insert from my computer. I've already done this. So here it's in my, my dude's folders for all of his stuff. He has a, a video, uh, channel youtube channel called fun machine check it out it's awesome this will probably be on there also but i'm going to click on this picture i'm going to bring it into this thing and i'm going to say i want to put it on that plane because realize that this plane right here is the x and the y plane you see over here in the right corner and that is the plane that i'll be cutting on using the Langmuir systems crossfire uh, xr and you're looking here you're like how do i know that's the dimensions well you don't right now so it's on the right plane i'm just gonna go over here and say okay once it's down here once i hit okay you price over here it jumped up here a word called canvas and I, if i go down and if i just open up that whole menu and then here is my image right here if i right click on that i go down to where does it say calibrate calibrate right there and then now what I can do is scroll in on the image. And remember, here's my caliper, and it's telling me it's exactly five inches. I'm gonna zoom in super far so I can kind of get it exact from this point right here to this point right here. And, you know, pretty close uh, as far as the camera will, will focus and all that kind of stuff. And you see over here, it gives me a value. I'm gonna say, five i n for inches it went from red to black saying okay i'm happy with the way you put that value in there and i hit enter and then now it has basically made this thing inch for inch exactly the same so when i make something on here it's dimensionally correct you know just to kind of prove the point here let's go ahead and start sketching so i'm hit sketch i want to sketch on this plane that i dropped the picture on and if i zoom in over here to this thing and I say, let's draw a line from the edge of this thing over here to this edge over here. You can see, sure enough, it is, well, 4.995. It's five inches from that point. So as I make the, the next parts uh, on there, I'm going to escape out of that. As I make the mount, it's going to be 
dimensionally accurate based on, on that right there. Okay, so once we know the dimensions, let's go ahead and figure out how we're gonna make this plate. So some things that I'm thinking as I'm figuring out where to put this plate is first off, I kinda want this motor to be bored as far as I can get it. So I'm gonna kinda tuck it in this corner kinda right here. I like the sprocket to be almost as close as I can get it to this tube right here just so that I can reduce some of the bending force that's gonna go on on the axle back here because it's just a half inch axle that it, we're using. I think it's going to eventually bend. It will go bigger, but right now it's just the free stuff we got. And we'll go and start with that. So uh, let me see. This plate right here is five inches. I'm going to go five and a half, maybe six inches from uh, top to bottom for the uh, that plate there. So I'm going to say sketch. Sketch on that plane. Again, the X and the Y plane. And um, let's figure out here first off. Uh, we'll turn on construction lines, and I use this anytime I'm just kind of putting some dimensions on the, the sheet. So right in between these two bolts is where the axle is going to go, right about like there. And then um, the the sprocket that's going to go on there is a about five inches. So I put three inches in here, then I know that that is about where the sprocket, you know, that's the, the limit, of obviously. It's going to be right in here, but I can't, so that whatever this plate I put in here, that's six inches by whatever has to, can't touch that plate. Um, and so what I want to do is I'll probably start back over here because remember the sprocket and the chain have got to clear all this stuff in here as it goes down to the bottom. Just So that's why I kind of got to tuck it a little bit further this way. So I'm going to hit the hot key R, and that's going to give me a rectangle. There's a couple different rectangles that you can use, but I like... I'm going to use this one just because what I can do is I can scroll in here and I can say I'm going to start on the center of that tube, you know, right about here, let's say. And I'm going to go over to the center. I'm going to turn off construction lines, which you can do even while you're in the middle of making something. Just until you finish it, you can't do that. So I'm going to go from there to there, and then I'm going to kind of come down, and I'm going to say, I don't care. The width is going to be whatever the width they let me do there, but I'm going to say tab, and this part's going to be six inches. To. There's the plate that I'm going to make. And then now make, to make this plate kind of follow the dimensions of this, the whole structure up here, I'm going to just say uh, hit the hotkey L or just select lines. I'm going to make this line go right at the center of that tube as best I can get it and touch that line over there. And then hotkey L again, grab it right there and go to there. And then I'm going to cut these pieces off there. And that is the, at least the dimensions of that sh that piece that I want that's going to go in there. Now what I'll do is we need to put the holes on there for the um, the mount that's on the back side of this. And so I'm going to do is hit hotkey R again for rectangle. And I'll probably start over here. It's probably going to be as close as I can get it over to that tube. And I'm going to say, actually I'm going to turn construction lines off because I don't want it to cut this thing. And it is going to be, the width is going to be 2.2 tab. And the length is going to be 4.08 inches. And that is where that thing is going to go. That's going to be the mount for the motor. And that's going to be as close as I'm going to get it over. And I think a good compromise for where that's going to go. And then once I have that there, actually I'm going to move it actually one more time here. I'm going to just make another rectangle. I'm going to move it down and over just a little bit right there. That's going to just give me a little bit more room for those bolt holes to go. I think that they used to, I remember engineering class, they would say two times the diameter of the bolt from the edge should give you, it should relieve all the stresses of the hole before it gets to the edge. So I don't know if that's right or not. I'll believe anything Mr. Bearden used to teach me. So there, I'm going to hit enter there. And that's the rectangle I'm actually going to use. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit hotkey C which is gonna be a center circle. And let's make some circles around these bolts. I'm gonna pull one out of the bag here that I've got. Uh, bolts, get my calipers and check them out real quick. And the bolts that are going through there are, looks like uh, 0.3 inches. So if I go 0.35, it's gonna get pretty good point. Oh, let's see, uh, center. I don't want it to be construction lines. Turn construction lines off, 0.35, enter. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to elongate these holes so that I can move the in motor forward and back 
to either tighten or loosen up the chain or something like that. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I'll probably make these holes, I'll elongate them towards the front of the vehicle by maybe a half an inch sounds about right to me. All right, now that I have all those additional circles, I'm just going to connect those with some tangential lines. I'm going to hit hotkey L. I'll go in over here and just say from here to there and make that. Did I do the line? Yep. There to there. And then a line from there to there. And then just do a little bit of trimming. This is a little tedious. There's probably an easier way to do this, but this will work. There, now I got all that stuff, trim that, trim that. Okay, once I got all those holes done, this is the piece that I want to cut. So I'm gonna hit hotkey E for extrude. I'm gonna click on it and you can kind of see that it took those holes out for me. So that's what I wanted to do. It's gonna be 0.25 or eighth inch plate steel, 11 gauge, I hit enter on that. And then now I've made that part. I can hit hotkey M, come over and grab it now and move it out of the way. Now you can kind of see that part that we made and we'll go ahead and cut that out later. Let's make another part. While we're at it here, we're gonna make this part that's gonna basically be on the sprocket. I'm just gonna go through some dimensions and show you some tricks here that I'm gonna do, but the sprocket uh, in general has three holes in it in a triangular uh, pattern and I'm gonna put a hole in the center. So I'm gonna do it all on the same sheet here. So I'm gonna say sketch, this is gonna make a new sketch. I'm gonna sketch on this plane, but I'm gonna sketch over here. I don't actually have to sketch on the, that plane over there. I'm gonna hit hotkey C for center. And this is gonna be the center hole. And I'm gonna use some uh, DOM tube that I have for this. So in this tube is exactly one inch. Uh, so I'm gonna put 1.02. I'm gonna just cut it just slightly over the size of that. So I don't have to open up that hole too much if I have to at all. And then the width of the, the total thing that I want to cut is going to be, it's, you know, about 2.5 inches is going to do it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go over here again. I'm going to say hotkey C. I'm going to say it's going to be 2.5. All right, so there's probably a better way to do this, but I've got a circle with three holes all the way around it. I need to figure out what the diameter of those holes are so I can put it onto this thing that I'm making. So for lack of a better plan, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of just make a triangle. And what I need to do is find out what are the, what are the distances between the holes. So I'm using my calipers and I'm finding that the distance between at least two of the, of the holes around the circle are 1.64 from 1.65 we'll say from center to center. So I'm gonna make a line. I'm gonna say 1.65, enter. Then I'm gonna make another line, hockey L, and I'm gonna say this one is 1.65 and enter. And then I'm gonna make a third line, hockey L, and I'm gonna say this one is 1.65, enter. And then now what I wanna do is I'm gonna say that the, some points are coincident. So um, let me see which one. So I'm gonna hit the coincidence. This, this feature right here, this uh, constraint right here, I'm gonna say that this point and that point are coincident. And that gives me my triangle. This is the 1.65, so that's the triangle that I need to figure out what, now what the radius of this is. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say create a circle with a three point circle. I'm gonna say the circle is based off of that point, that point, and that point. And then now I can say hotkey L again and go from the center to the outside. And that gives me, at least it gives me the, where how what the radius is, how far those holes are from the center. And it looks like 0.953. So, if I come over here now and I say escape out of that and I say hotkey L, grab the construction lines and I just say, all right, up here, let's go 0.953 and that's where that hole is gonna go. And then I say center, and I give myself a, a, a circle around this point. Now I want that hole, again, I'm gonna turn construction lines off because I actually want to cut this thing. That hole, 
um, let me see what the holes are here. It's 0.24, measure twice, cut once, 0.24. Let's just call it 0.26, because it can be a little bit bigger, that's fine. 0.26 and enter. So there's one of the holes in there. And then now what I can do is I can go and create a circular pattern. And I can say, I'm gonna get this thing, I'm gonna center it around that point right there. I didn't want to do two points, I want to do one. So I'm going to say, I'm going to grab this point. I'll go and say, select this center point, and then I want it three. That There you go, that's exactly how many I want. You can change this number, you can say five or whatever it is, but in this case, it's going to be three. And there is the object I need to make. I'm going to hit hockey E for extrude. I'm going to extrude that thing, it's going to be point one, two, five. And there is the flange that I'm going to cut out, and I'll weld that thing on. So there is my second part I'm going to make. I'm gonna move it over here next to this thing. Boom. All right, now I need to make another part. I gotta make a couple more parts and I'll, I'll just go like a bazillion times speed as I go through them so you can see what I'm making but I won't do any more talking. So here you go. All right, well, if you followed along with that, that is kind of the st stuff that I do on my channel all the time, uh, is make those parts. And I, I showed a bunch of different techniques I use for that. Some things I haven't tried before is like overlaying two canvases over top of each other, but that's what I do, and you can check out all stuff I do. I have a whole bunch of videos on my Langmuir Systems playlist of me just making all kinds of stuff like this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you how easy it is to cut these things out. I'm going to basically, in Fusion 360, they have CAD and CAM in the same program, computer-aided design. And now we just switched over to computer-aided manufacturing. So I'm going to go to Setup, which I just did like three times. I don't know why I did that. Um, and this kind of sounds weird, but you know when you cut things on a plasma table, you end up having a whole bunch of small parts. So I could nest this all together and have it cut in one file, but what I'm going to do is make like a couple different files because all the pieces I have are just small scraps anymore. And so that's one of the cool things about a plasma table is that you can just cut with scraps. So I'm gonna pick one body, I'm gonna pick this one, and then I'm gonna go box point, I'm gonna say this top left point over here. And that's because I cut all my metal starting from the top left and I cut down to the bottom right. So I do that, and then I'm just gonna name this thing the motor plate. All right, and since these are all on the same sheet here, if you will, I only will have to pick the cutter one time, which is kind of nice. So you can do this every time. I'm not sure why. I'm going to go select the tool. And on my Crossfire XR, I use the um, Razor Weld 45. And people hate on this thing on the Internet all the time, and it has just been totally awesome for me. I'm going to cut this. Might slow it down just a little bit. It's got, got some small holes to cut there. Uh, that looks good. 90 should work. And I'm going to cut this thing. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make this 90 degrees. And the holes I have point through. So I think about a, that might do it. I'm going to go a 0.15. And that should allow me to cut all those holes. And I wanted to start cutting top first. So that way it'll enter over here, it'll make this cut, and so it'll start, and it'll come all the way around, 
and so it'll still be connected onto this piece of the material which won't move that much but if you cut all the way around and then get back to the very top and cut where I usually have thin material up here it might move around a little bit so that's what I'm going to do all right I'm going to say okay and then what you should see is as it's generating a the the G code right now and this is the profile that it's going to cut and if I want to animate that you can kind of see how the tool is going to look as it starts making the cut and what the plasma cutter is going to do so that's pretty cool anyway that one looks good I'm going to go ahead and now create G code all right I'm going to select that folder and I'm going to post it boom now that one's ready to go now I'm going to do the same thing over here All right, we got them all in there now. And uh, let's go take it down to the Lingmere Systems Crossfire XR and cut these things out. All right, so if you haven't seen the XR before, let me show you what I've got. I got my computer over here. This is the touch screen that comes with it. I've relocated it just because I didn't want it hanging off the side of the XR. But besides that, really, I've done no real mods to this table. Here's some quarter inch plates standing over here. And here are those, what we call the skeletons, the small pieces of metal that we have left. So everything I'm making today is just out of scrap. This right here is uh, one of the lower suspension arms from our trophy, our race truck. So, um, you know, basically it's going to cost us nothing to make these parts. But besides that, I'm filling the water table with water. It becomes a mess, guys. Overthink the water tables. Just, you know, just put water in them, whatever you need. And if you leave water in for a long time, maybe put some borax in. I have the Harbor Freight air dryer. I got a video on that. This thing's been working awesome for me. Totally makes the consumables last longer. A DeWalt uh, compressor over there, single stage. In this one, you know, it, it, it totally does more air than is required for uh, this table. My computer is nothing special that I run on this thing. But so let's go ahead and cut some parts. And I got this is everything's got to fit up. Here's the brake. It's got to fit up and and the uh, the sprocket. Here's the brake. Uh, a caliper that we're going to be putting on this thing so let's go ahead and cut apart and see how it works first thing we're going to do anytime before i cut on this thing is i'm going to go ahead and home it. i go over to this home function right here and just home the machine what that's going to do it's going to run the machine all the way to its limit switches so you can see it's coming over here on the x axis and it's going to hit this limit switch and then both the y axis are going to come back and hit these limit switches uh, back over here that will square the machine you know basically let the computer know where it's at and i do that just about every time before i start a cut and once it hits those it's gonna to be totally squared ready to go let's go ahead and cut some parts for the most part most of my cuts with the langmuir systems either the crossfire pro or the xr and i've owned both of them have been just totally successful and here the they're just not perfect um you'll see that the holes the smaller holes aren't cutting out completely and later on i got to go with a screwdriver and kind of push out the hole and they, they come out pretty easily but the issue was my lead in and lead out speeds. And this is the art of the whole thing is getting the settings correct for the cuts. Later on, for those that are interested, I do a lead in at 80 inches per minute. I cut at 90 inches per minute and I do a lead out at 120 and I do a, a sweep radius of 0.05 and, uh, and I always make my, my lead in as long as I can possibly make it. So it's kind of established and cutting before it gets off there. But once I fix those things, and I put those, those values in, then the holes come out perfect. And sometimes getting that perfect cut is really in the settings. And that is the art of using the plasma tables. All right, I just want to give you a little fabrication update of the project I dread explaining to my wife. We're too far in now, we can't stop. Anyway, uh, first off, I, I think it looks really cool. Uh, and for those of you that are parents, you're probably like, I think he's sitting too high. I think the center grab, I'd agree. There's a couple design flaws uh, in this whole thing. Uh, we can start up front. The steering, uh, even on the original design, and for those of you who are car guys, it doesn't account for Ackerman angle. And uh, the way you get Ackerman angle, if you're interested, is you draw a line from this point to the point where your steering tie rod connects to the center of the rear axle. And what that allows you to do is the front wheel, the inside wheel when you're making a turn, turns more than the outside wheel because they're on two different arcs. There's no Ackerman angle on here and it's a solid shaft. So I don't know how this thing's gonna turn, but not my problem, it's my little boy's problem, he'll figure it out. Um, anyway, 
going down we got the fronts kind of widening and ready to go i think we just wind it just because we wanted to make it look cooler maybe a little bit more stable too um the seat is just on here held on by some weights let's take a look at all of the fabrication that has gone on in the back here's that plate you saw me make it uh was a pretty much a perfect fit to that we got the engine on the motor on there i had to fabricate up some of these parts you saw me make this part uh and i just basically weld that onto this dom I don't know, it was like an inch and a quarter. The inner diameter was one half of an inch and it's some really thick stuff. And I just basically tack a lot of that onto the, the tube. I still gotta do that for the disc brake over here. So gotta tack that on, I just lined up that disc brake, but here's the brakes over here. These things, I'll put a link for this in the description below. I got it on Amazon, it's like 12 bucks for the disc, the disc and the caliper. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a cable up to where his foot's gonna go up there. I had to fabricate these little pieces on that basically engage the, the, the wheel over here. but all in all it's working pretty good so um, I, uh, like i said it's a wiring mess right now there's probably a couple hours of wiring that needs to be done but i'll make the little dude do that that's stuff he's got to learn how to do here's the cool part you get this awesome uh throttle from the chinese manufacturer and you hit it and <laughs> it's gonna be a rock that's just like a little tiny pulse of the throttle let me gonna give you a little tiny the first time it hits it goes and there's so much more throttle to this thing I'd say I'm a little bit scared. I, and I would also call this thing kind of a test bed. This is the first um, go-kart we made with this motor, brushless motor and all that kind of stuff and the battery. We're gonna locate all those things. Uh, and I think we're gonna make another one lower with real go-kart tires or maybe some off-road tires. So when I take Honcho out, he can take this thing out and rage around in the desert with us and that'll be a really good time. So let's go ahead. We're gonna, I think, take this thing apart completely now. We're gonna paint the frame. I gotta make some pedals for this thing that sounds easy but you know what that ends up being like the hardest part is making pedals so that might take me a little bit of time to do that and then wire the whole thing up and cover it so it looks good and then hopefully by the time ryan sees what he threw out he's like ah, man that's awesome i wish i hadn't thrown that out anyway let's get to it all right this is how we're doing our first test oh my god <laughs> I'm controlling throttle on this first one. Oh my god, yeah, stop. Okay, I want to show you this. So me and the dude went to Home Depot and I said, what colors do you want? He said, I want light blue and dark blue. And I was like, ah, I don't think that's gonna be good. But you know, now that we got it on there, I think it looks super trick. And especially we painted everything else black. So it's gonna be black on this light and dark blue and i tell you what i think it's gonna pop i can't wait to start putting the scene together in the final assembly i still need to figure out pedals but i think we'll be able to do that maybe I have to weld some things on there so it'll be a little bit of sanding and grinding to get the paint off but besides that man it looks really trick nice job matthew all right check it out it is time for the first official drive i think it looks totally trick you know there's obviously some stuff that we did a lot more fabrication than yeah guys you get when you put pedals on and stuff like that it adds to the fabrication, just a whole bunch of stuff. But but uh, besides that, we got a huge wire die going, that has to happen, but we're gonna try and drive it today and see how it goes. And I, I've said this before in other videos, there's something special about driving a vehicle that you made for the first time. And and dude, what do you think, man? What's What are your thoughts before you go drive it for the first time? I'm just nervous. You're it's nervous? So fast. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty cool though. You're pretty proud of yourself making this, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You picked all the colors out. I tell you what, man, I love it. I think you did a great job. I really like it. color change in the middle. It though. does, yeah. It's light blue in the back, dark blue in the front. We say we hop on it and let's go see how she does. All right, so just a little tap of the gas and then roll it and let it hit the brakes. It works, it works all right. A little bit of practice, yeah, just getting a little bit of throttle. That throttle is so touchy. There you go. Now you got it. Good. Yeah, that axle, I can already tell, it's going to last about two minutes, and we're going to be replacing that axle. That's all right, though. We build it. It works. It's got so much power. Start slow and then build it up. Yep, yeah, it's really smooth on the pedal.
tell you what, I am so proud of you, man. This thing is awesome. I, where do we get this thing from again? Trash. Just took it out of the trash. So how much did it cost? Free. Free. My favorite price. Not anyway, awesome. so I mean, we did spend about, I think, $120 for a motor. We had the battery from this one mm -hmm. that we use on that one, and it works awesome. Now, there are some mods that we have to do to that. Yes. First, we got to do the axle. Yes, yes. We got to do a wire die. Mm -hmm. We have to do we, the steering, the Ackerman angle, and I explained what that was. We're going to fix that so it steers better. And then my most favorite mod we're going to do to it, we got to make it big enough so I can drive it. What's your, what's your favorite part about it? Because I was watching you ride it, and you were a little timid at the first couple of rides, and then you took off, and it was like K1 speed. You were racing. Yeah, it's like, I was like, like at first I was like really nervous, but then as soon as I was like, this is kind of fun. But I just had to. Let it rip? Yeah, I had to give it the beat. Here was your first build, and I do like the colors kind of match. Your first build, which I also think was awesome, you can check out our playlist. Uh, I, I, you know what I need to do? I need to make a playlist that just says Matthew's Rides. And you'll see the, the four-wheeler, which we got for free off of Facebook Marketplace. And then now we've got the, I don't know what this thing's going to be called, the uh, racer the, uh, that we the, got from our neighbors thrown the, in the trash. Oh, I know one. Huh. Crazy Mobile. Crazy Mobile. You hit that throttle and Crazy Mobile is going to take off, so you need to be careful. Yes. This is what we do with this channel. We build stuff in Fusion 360 with computer-aided design. We cut parts out. We build stuff. We do this all the time. Usually it's with trophy trucks and overlanding rigs, but today is with Crazy Mobile. So if you like what you saw here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button and ringing the bell for notification of future episodes. We've got a lot more of this stuff coming out, and I hope you'll choose to join us. Thanks for watching this one. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care of yourself.